One thing I wanted to do the best I could in a minute or two or probably three, somewhere in there, just give you a brief understanding of something we call uh, uh, convergence or uh, trigeminal cervical convergence, meaning how is it that people with jaw pain can have neck pain and how is it that sometimes people with neck pain can be experiencing facial pain, head pain, or jaw pain. So just kind of a quick sort of neuroanatomical uh, approach to this because uh, we, we always say, you know, in general, uh, almost all of our temporomandibular disorder type patients have neck pain, but not all of our neck patients necessarily have TMJ or TMD related pain. And, you know, there's never any always in life, but that's general uh, kind of rule of thumb. Um, uh, Steve Krauss, uh, who's a physical therapist uh, out of Atlanta, has done some wonderful research in this area. You know, he's shown that almost 68% of all patients with temporomandibular disorders uh, have some form of neck pain. I know in our clinic, uh, sometimes people aren't even aware that they're having neck issues till we start touching and palpating uh, through their neck areas. And they're like, whoa, that's a lot more tender than I thought or anticipated it would be. So as you can see on my, my screen here, and something that I, I lecture about frequently is this idea of convergence. And um, let me get you to the next slide here. So uh, you can have convergence of the trigeminal and the cervical nerves. It's an anatomic and physiologic explanation for refer referred pain from the cervical region to the trigeminal region. So the muscles of the jaw, tongue, face, throat, and neck, they can work synergistically to execute uh, multiple oral facial functions, but pain in those areas alters the movements. Neck or shoulder pain may result in impaired jaw movement and vice versa. So this is out of uh, Dr. Jeff uh, Okasin, who's an amazing uh, TMD dental specialist out of the University of Kentucky. Uh, this is out of his book. It's a slide uh, that I'm showing you here. But uh, basically, if you can follow my mouse, uh, this is so underneath our skull, in our brain, where our brain stem resides, uh, we have what's called the trigeminal nucleus, which is right around in this area. So a lot of the nerve tissue and signals can uh, emanate back and forth from this area that gives you uh, an interpretation of whether it's sensory or pain or touch when it comes to the various areas. Uh, uh, we call it sort of the, uh, uh, the ophthalmic, uh, the maxillary or the mandibular area of our face and jaw. But if you look slightly below here, this is where majority, mainly the cervical one, two, and three, but uh, some anatomical studies have shown as far down as four and five, the cervical nerves can um, uh, provide uh, feedback into this location in the lower part of the brainstem. So where I'm trying to go with this is that for some people, they, if they have uh, facial pain, whether it's from the temporomandibular area, tooth pain, uh, muscular pain, but if they have it for an extended period of time where it starts to become chronic, so usually our definition of chronic is three months or more, what can happen is they can continue to keep getting pain input into the trigeminal nucleus and the brainstem, and that can eventually spill over or get picked up into the uh, where the upper uh, three cervical uh, nerve uh, branches can uh, pick up these signals and then all of a sudden now they start having neck pain, whether it's in the sternocleidomastoid or the trapezius. We see the other can happen in the reverse. Someone might have uh, ongoing neck related pain, let's say from a car accident or a whiplash or a concussion. And after a couple months possibly, if pain signals keep getting picked up into the brainstem where the upper cervical nerves uh, uh, send input, that can spill over into that trigeminal nucleus and now they start having referred pain and symptoms into the head and jaw. So I guess the message I want you to take away from this video, for some of you that are having sort of this unrelenting facial pain, and in your opinion, you've exhausted all means that you're wearing an oral appliance, it's not helping, you've received good therapy in this area and it's not reducing these symptoms, please make sure your practitioner is looking very closely at your neck muscles and or your facet joints in your neck to see if you have any joint restrictions, limitation of movement, or muscular issues that could actually be the primary source of your problem. So they hurt here, but over time are causing and referring and manifesting pain in this area. So that's just a little quick sort of anatomical explanation for this correlation between head and neck pain. I hope this is helpful. Uh, I welcome your feedback. Thank you very much.